Hey, this is Dan from Music Explorer. In part one of our interview with Danny Miranda, we talked about his influences and his first major break auditioning for Blue Easter Cult. In part two, we talked to Danny about his audition for the Queen musical, We Will Rock You, and then the tour with Queen and Paul Rogers, and also his time with Meatloaf, and then his return back to Blue Easter Cult. How was it filling Deacon's shoes? Well, the good thing for me is I had a head start because from September of 04, I was doing the We Will Rock You show. So eight times a week, 10 times a week, however many shows we did, I was John Deacon, you know? It's the music of Queen and, you know, we played like 25 Queen songs a night. So to get into his touch and really micromanaging his parts, I was living it every day. And I was always a, a fan of John's. So for me to slip in there, um, wasn't like starting from scratch and also the free stuff and the bad company stuff I really cut my teeth to that even more than the Queen because I was a big Bos Burrell fan and Andy Frazier of course and those first two bad company records was were the Bible for me in high school to add to it Paul and I are big Chicago blues fans so he would show up early at rehearsal and we play some some Billy Dixon stuff or Muddy Waters or Howlin' Wolf stuff and just sit there, guitar and bass. We'll say, do you know this Howlin' Wolf song? And I said, no, no I'll, I'll teach it to you. Or some Buddy Guy things, and um, he loved Hendrix. I love Hendrix, like my favorite song is Little Wing, and we, we do yeah. Little Wing, and you know, and um, real, we're, they're all real music fans too. There's one video I saw with you and Roger Taylor, it was pretty cool. You're, you got, I don't know what it is you're playing, some sort of bass, a stand-up bass, and he's, you're playing, doing another one bites the dust. Remember the Steinberger basses like Sting used to play and the headless basses? Stein, Ned Steinberger, who's a genius, um, who also designed that Spectre bass that everybody still plays, mm -hmm. that's Ned Steinberger's design. That's why they call it the NS. He designed an electric upright bass. It's got a magnetic pickup and a piezo pickup, so you can make it sound more like an upright or more like an electric bass guitar or anything in the middle. Roger's a big fan of Gene Krupa. He did a movie where he played a drum solo and then he gets up and starts playing the upright bass with the sticks. And he said, wouldn't that be kind of cool to do because he's not into drum solos or bass solos. He's like, let's make it a little bit of fun, get the audience involved and not have it so much as come look at me, look what I can do. He says, why don't we do something together? And we had to coordinate what my left hand was doing and what he was doing with yeah. the stick. So we rehearsed a bit and didn't always come out great, but it was always a lot of fun. It was and it was entertaining to the people, you know. Um, it sh it should be it should be fun. The first gig was in uh, Fancourt, South Africa. Us and Annie Lennox were the only non-African uh, groups. The rest were all from that continent. First gig that they'd done as Queen since Freddie was alive too. So it was a very monumental gig, but also the Ukraine, you know, we didn't realize how many people were there until we went to the airport and we saw it on the TV and there was over 350,000 people there. Really every gig had that kind of memorability to it. They were all unforgettable in their own way. After Queen ended, the Queen and Paul Rogers tour ended, then you hooked up with Meatloaf, how did that happen? I knew a lot of the guys in the band and um, there was an opening spot and they asked me if I wanted to play bass and it was steady work with my friends and great music, a lot of touring, you know. We toured enough, but not too much. You know, we were still home half the year and it was a lot of fun. It was a definitely never a dull moment with that guy especially. And then I started playing a lot of rock symphonies with Randy Jackson. Uh, there's this company called Windborne out of Virginia Beach and they do uh, rock symphonies. It could be the music of Pink Floyd or Queen or Led Zeppelin or David Bowie or Tom Petty, whatever. And it's like a rock and roll band backed with 80 or 100 pieces and doing cashmere and all that other stuff. So then we got back in Blue Oyster Cult. How did that happen? How did the reunion with the guys come back? Chasm was leaving to go back with Todd Rundgren. So the manager said, well, here we go again. Do you want to get back on the bus with these guys? So um, so that's what happened. So I'm here again. 